Thanks for the time, Skip. We'll go straight to questions using the raised hand function. Please use the raised hand function if you have a question. Let's start with Jeff. I think it's safe, safe to say that this sweep was a lot harder than maybe <laughs> you wanted it to be or it should have been. Um, well, how do you feel about just getting through it, you know, even as difficult as it was to complete today? And then can you talk about not only Long's home run, but the double and the single two in that, you know, he, he took, took those um, without trying to go out of the park, you know, necessarily every time. And those are big hits for you. Well, I mean, to the first part of what you said, I mean, we don't, honestly, we don't look at it like how it's supposed to go. That got thrown out, you know, that got thrown out uh, week three. So, um, and that's what we just talked about. Like we can't, as a, as a staff, as a team, we can't sit and say, well, this is what it should look like, or this is what it's supposed to be based on, you know, the personnel stuff that we had. So um, our mindset and going into every weekend, every opponent, every midweek game is this is going to be, you know, challenging. Um, I, I wish I had a, you know, a, a, a different take on it, but that's what it's going to be. And the best part about that is the guys are up for the challenge. They realize it. Um, uh, you know, they, 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 they work hard every day. They're giving the effort. They're staying in it. But it's going to be a little bit um, unconventional. And we've been talking about that all season. So I'm, I'm pleased with – and, you, you know, it's a serious sweep. So we're not going to look back on it, I don't think, at the end of the season and, hey, how'd that happen? Or let's analyze that. You know what? Given what we're dealing with, we're going to take it and move on and go to the next game and try to win that game. However, you know, whatever we need to do. Uh, but back to Ethan, yeah, I was just talking with the radio guys. When you talk about competitive people, you want those, those guys in that situation. So, you know, he heard him with the long ball today, but he also heard him with, you know, whatever – um, you know, he'll take what they give him type of bat. And, and those were all proved to be very, very big runs on a day like today. Jonah. Hey, Coach. I just wanted to focus in um, on that sixth inning. Uh, you guys had, had not had a hit for three straight innings before that. And, um, and then you just come in and sort of – it seemed like it gave you just some new life and, and you guys looked aggressive. Um, from there on out. So could you just talk a, a little bit about the sixth inning? Well, I mean, baseball is baseball. You're not going to score every inning. I'll say that up front. But um, I thought we did a good job of capitalizing. We had some good at-bats in there, uh, clearly. But I thought we did some a good job on capitalizing on a couple mistakes they made defensively. And then, um, you know, with Ethan's big hit, that certainly uh, let our guys, let our dugout know, hey, we're, we're, we're right back in this thing. So – um, it was a little bit of them and a little bit of us, I think, in that bottom of the six. Jacob. Hey, Tracy, when, when you guys get off to a slower start on the mound and, and fall behind a little bit in the game, how important is it just to kind of stick with the approach at the plate like you guys did today and, and be able to get yourself back in the game the way you were able to? Yeah, it seems that that's been a little bit of how all the games have gone, you know, and um, – but, no, it just goes back to there's, – there's different facets of the game. And so from an office, offensive standpoint, you can't control what just happened in the top, for, for example, today in the top half of that inning. That's over. So it should not impact your bat. you got to grind out at bats. You have a plan. You execute the plan. And then guys trusting each other that, um, you know, we throw enough of those good at bats together. It's, it, it's, you know, that's what we can control in that situation. We can't control the defense piece of it at that point. We can't control what we're doing on the mound. What we can't control is what we do in the batter's box. And I think our guys are growing up big time in that regard because we've had some unusual, you know, some, uh, I don't want to call it deflating because again, it's baseball, but it's a little bit up and down, but our mentality, I think we've shown time and time again, we don't rattle, we don't roll over, we don't quit. We continue to be relentless. And, uh, you know, ultimately we fought back in a lot of these games, even games we've lost. We, we don't roll over. We keep going. So that's what you look for. And that's what the guys are doing. Nicholas. Hey, Coach, you know, despite the series sweep of this weekend, I think it's safe to say that this was not the best of pitching series for your guys. Um, what is the pitching staff going to have to do in this month of May to really put this team in a position where you guys can feel comfortable going into a postseason run? Well, it's just, it, you know, my, my ears perked up when you said despite the, the series sweep. 
Um, it's hard, you know, it's hard to get a sweep. So I, I'm going to say, I, I, I'm, I'm going to eliminate the word despite. I'm going to go to the second part of your question on that about what do we need to do. Um, I would say compete better in the zone, you know, like we know. I mean, we know that we've got to clean it up on the mound, and, you know, throw strikes and compete in the zone and give our defense a chance because as we continue through the conference, the, the last certainly four weeks in postseason play, but the last four weeks, we know the quality of opponents that we're getting ready to face are good teams. So, you know, uh, we, we can't have some of the uh, looseness on the mound or the, you know, missing location that we've had right now and, and get away. But it's not like guys are out there trying to walk guys. They're not. Um, we've asked a lot of this, this staff and under man, we've asked a lot of them and we've been grinding for months now and maybe we're seeing a little bit of fatigue. So I think the best that we can do as a staff is, you know, is do our job to, to, to get these guys rested, to get them focused to what's going to be a very, very tough uh, final stretch on what has been a very, very tough set of circumstances. But I sit here today and tell you, I am proud as hell is what these guys are doing. And the fact that we just, you know, swept a team, I'm not going to sit here and apologize for it. I don't really care who it is. We've been, you know, we've been battling. We're going to continue to battle. So, but again, I appreciate your question, but I think it's pretty obvious what we need to do, and that's eliminate the free bases. Nick? Tracy, uh, given that Spencer Torkelson just came through, it'd be silly to ask if you'd ever seen anything like the stretch Ethan Long is having, but... Um, how do you put into perspective what he's done the last couple of weeks? I think eight homers in the last seven games now. Um, I, I'm not I'm not a stat guy enough to know what that ranks in, but I'd say just from the eyeball test of of you know in my career, you know I, I've I've had uh, you know I've had a handful of guys. I, I'd have to go back and look, but it's impressive. It's right up there. I mean, you, you referenced Torkelson. Um, it reminds me of that and Kyle Schwarber. You know, uh, um, there was a kid I had back in Miami of Ohio that had Mike Ferris. Mike Ferris had a stretch like this where they basically single-handedly just say, hey, man, get on my back, and, uh, you know, I'm going to carry the team for a little bit. So it, it's impressive, and he takes a lot of pride in his craft. And I can just tell you as a, as a baseball coach but maybe baseball fan, it sure is fun to watch. And I'm glad that he's in our dugout doing it. Jacob? You mentioned a moment ago – fatigue and how that could factor into the last month of the season that might be kind of a factor for you guys now how, how do you go about managing that over the course of the next couple of weeks as you do get closer to postseason play what, what's kind of the strategy for managing guys arms and, and fatigue right now well um you know i i i, I don't want to like put it as an absolute but what i would anticipate because our goal down the stretch is to win weekends you know, so I would assume at some point during those weekends, you're going to have, you know, as a coach or a staff, we're going to have to make a decision. Do we go for it, you know, right here and use, you know, the quote unquote better arms in the bullpen. So I think it's going to be a little bit of that. I think we're going to have to do as best we can early in the game, kind of see where you are in those innings, four, five, six, and then make strategic decisions with your pitching staff that give you the best chance to win the series, um, you know, and, and, but, you know, I don't want to act like that's new to what we're doing. That's what we've been doing since week three. So um, it's going to be a challenge, but I think we're up for the challenge. We're looking forward to it. And what you'll also see, I believe, and I truly believe this, you're going to see some guys that haven't done much yet are just, are, are, are finally going to get an opportunity and someone's going to surprise us. That always happens. So I'm looking forward to see who that is. And, and, and like Kai Murphy today, I thought Kai came in there and did a fantastic job. And, you know, he's going to not force our hand because we'd already talked about it. But, you know, that's going to be an option. If a guy like that can be out there and competing, that certainly is going to help, um, you know, get some of those outs and, and allow us to choose some innings and not have to, you know, continue to uh, use guys. But if you've got big leads or you've got big deficits, you might have to make strategic decisions to save arms. So. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Two more questions, Jonah. Yeah, uh, speaking of pitching, I just I think it's important to highlight uh, what Brady did today. You know, you guys were trading punches, and then all of a sudden he comes comes in with a huge strikeout in the eighth, and then the the battle from Rhode Island in the ninth to almost come back. Just um, what did you see from him? And 
and him sort of battling out the um, the possible comeback by Rhode Island. Yeah, I mean, what I liked about it was, you know, we had the the, the double play that you know, I, I, Swifty would if he were sitting here in this chair, he'd say the same thing. I I, I should have turned that. I would have turned that a hundred out of a hundred times. Didn't happen. All right. So then some of the adversity stuff that happened after the guy gets a base hit. And that's kind of baseball. You know, that's going to happen, particularly the way this weekend's going. You know, he gets a hit and the guy pops one out. But what, what I liked is a mature Brady Corrigan who's been around for a while, who's got some seasoning to him, didn't rattle. You know, he didn't rattle. We still had a one run lead. We're still in a position to win the game. And he executed quality pitches after that, where, you know, I, I would argue sometimes on a home run like that, brings them right back there one swing away with the wind howling out that maybe a lesser person, a less focused person would have let the, the motions of the game catch up to them. I liked how he refocused and uh, reset his mind and got back out there and made quality pitches to end the game. And at the end of the day, I said, it's, it, 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 the, the name of this game is to be one, you know, have a greater score than your opponent at the end of nine innings. And that's what he did. So I, I was very proud of him to recover right there. Last question, Jeff. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you a little more about Kai. Is he, because um, he hasn't pitched except for these two times, is he pretty much able to go? Is he on some kind of limitations at all, or can he pretty much go? And then also, um, have you changed your um, you know, position about trying to still get Ethan back on the mound? Um, first with Kai, uh, you know, that, it, that obviously this is born a little bit out of necessity of what we're trying to do, but he is not, you know, we took him out of it. We knew we were going to probably use him at some point today, but truth be told, he's not had a lot of preparation stuff in the bullpens and really working up to that. I, I think that's something we're going to have to visit as revisit as a staff as to how best prepare him um, so that he can do both, that he can play certainly positionally, but also, be someone who can help us chew up the uh, the innings that we've lost. Um, and then I'm getting old. So what was the last part of your question? Well, you Ethan. know, you said yeah that you were yeah. trying to get him back on the yeah. mound. Is that still? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's still the plan. I mean, we, uh, you know, he was one of the most, I thought one of the most dominant pitchers for us, but you know, we're going to be, be smart with him, but I think we're going to need, if he's healthy, we're going to need those innings down the stretch. And, we just want to make sure that we have the maximum preparation time so we're not putting these kids in a position where, you know, they could potentially hurt themselves. So he competes. As you've seen, he can beat you. Well, so both of those guys can help you with the bat and they can help you with the arm. So at our point and with what we're dealing with, we're looking for competitive people who want to help ASU win baseball games. That's what we want and that's what we need. And both of those guys fit that, you know, fit that mold. So, um, but we'll, uh, We'll get into that's one thing with the schedule the way it is. We haven't had a lot of opportunities for practices in a, in a regular setting. Um, so we're looking forward to kind of slow things down a little bit this week when we can um, get some pins in and see exactly where we are and what we need to do for what I anticipate is going to be a really, really, you know, challenging but fun, you know, last four weeks of the season. Thanks for the time, coach. Thanks.